We had a cook with a greasy look. He yes. was covered in dust and ashes. He stuffed their holes with half-baked rolls and gave us indigestion with his mashes. <laughs> it's the, the 575 verses of that yeah, poem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the shearer's lament. The shearer's lament. Yeah. The galleys were a, a part of the travelling chaff cutter for, for years. The galley was was a part and parcel of the uh, the plant. It's interesting too when I look back onto the the, the cooks. Uh, they were a, nearly a breed of their own in those days. Most of them were um, were shearers cooks along with chaff cutters cooks, and uh, some of them were good. Some were. Uh, they used to say, who called the cook a bastard? <laughs> and, and others would say, who called the bastard a cook? <laughs> and, and then they used to refer to them as bait layers. Yeah. <laughs> professional bait layer. Bait layer. But they'd done a marvellous job, you know, how like the heat in this in the middle of summer was dreadful. <laughs> you know, and they used to sweat, and I, I dare say there'd be a bit of sweat going in the gravy now oh, and again. The, the, the sweat off the cooks <laughs> used to put a bit of salt in their tucker. <laughs> yeah. It's really, truly, you know, opened my eyes for how, how these men could bloody get in that bloody cubby house to watch the cool and sweat away all day long and cook. Monday morning, uh, we'd gather uh, around, mostly around the butcher shops, the baker shops, and pick the, the gang up. The, uh, the meat of a Monday morning was half a sheep, uh, plus a plus a big lump of uh, corn, uh, plus uh, 11 pound of sausages. Well, 11 pound of sausages made breakfast for Monday morning. <laughs> a pound yeah. of sausages a, a man. Oh no, it was wonderful. And, and of course you'd line up at the galley for your tucker and with the men and uh, oh, I thought it was great, you know. And when I had enough of it after I'd thread the needle for a while, you know, with my uncle Bartoli, I'd hop on a load of chaff and come into town and then just waddle off home. The troops were being paid by the tonne, not by the week. And the cook was normally on, on a, a retainer of about two pound a week. In most cases, the cooks were paid a top until threepence a tonne to keep them going because the buggers would stay in bed and wouldn't get going. But when you give them a, the extra two, uh, or three a ton. They'd get out of bed and make sure the bloody gang was working, you see. <laughs> the gang consisted of, uh, of 11 men. They had two stackmen, and their job was to get the hay to the steamer feeder. You had, you had one pitching and one turning. The turner was the fellow that was near the steam box feeder. Then it got to the feeder who fed it through the cutter. The knives cut it, it went down off the riddle boards, then up in the elevator and in, into a, a box. The, uh, the bloke that was waiting for the bag to be filled, he'd put the, the bag, empty bag on the other fellow and he'd be sewing his bag. He'd, he'd take his bag to the heat and by that time the, his mate's bag would be full so he'd put the empty bag up, up in the cylinder and they called it ring, sew and stack. And of course, the cook and the, the water joey, his job was to uh, to cart the water to the engine and cut the wood for the engine driver. That was from basically seven o'clock in the morning until six of, uh, in the afternoon. That, that was the day's work. Sometimes we had to do a 40, 40 or 50 mile trip to go from one place to another, from um, uh, Blaney to Millthorpe was, was the, the width. And around Wagga, we, we, we cut at Rosewood one year, well, a couple of years at Rosewood, uh, from uh, Rosewood down to um, Burrumbuttock, from Old Journey to Henty, that way. So, a big part of New South Wales. You couldn't get a better lot of men together for so long uh, and not have an argument. They'd work together live together, tell the answer together. Winter time would come, you'd build a campfire and you'd sit all around the campfire. I'd tell a yarn, you see, and I'd tell my yarn. Then all would join in and sing, that's a cute little rhyme. Tell us another one, tell us another one, do. Tell you a good story. We were cutting on Dummy Learns' place at Yurra Quinty 
and the, the cook by the name of Dimmock is sort of sitting half lying down cutting chops in the galley and I walked across the engine drive and I said if that cook doesn't and that's as far as I got I was going to say cut his finger off he stand at the door with a bloody rag around it, <laughs> and I came over and I said what's wrong he said I've cut the top off my finger <laughs> so I said give us a look he took the rag off he looked at it and his blood spurt in there and he collapsed, he, he fainted on the bloody floor and the finger was mi mixed up and it amongst the top. And Miller, poor bugger, got killed in Malaya. <laughs> he had, had it in a, a tobacco tin for two or three days till it really shrizzled up altogether. <laughs> I said to him, what are you going to do with it? He said, oh, it'd be handy to pick me nose. <laughs> <laughs> so we did have, have a bit of fun in those days too, but we always had Miller, he used to do our ironing, and he used to do it naked with the stuff on there, with the, with the old oh, <laughs> flat on, yeah. strip stark while I'm naked. <laughs> did you want to be in the middle of summer in here? When the old man gave the galley to this mob here, I had a heart attack. I oh, written on the door was please don't shit near galley. <laughs> so I had to race race out with a rub and rub and down and sit out near the galley <laughs> off the door. <laughs> Bill right there now, but in those days no one would have loved you at all. <laughs> Just like a hotel. Right? You head for the galley. It doesn't matter what it's you know what Wet one and I or the shine of the galley was a your main meeting spot for all the work. You'd say it nearly say the heart of the heart of the mm -hmm. job, wouldn't you? Yeah, yes, yeah. that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The heart of the job.